You probably already know that volcanic eruptions are often known to trigger earthquakes for reasons that are kind of self-explanatory, but it's long been a bit uncertain whether or not this happens the other way round, i.e. whether or not big earthquakes can trigger volcanic eruptions. As Dr. Gil Serapane and colleagues mention in their review paper on the topic, a major problem is that correlation doesn't always mean causation. That said, they found that most types of volcanoes can be triggered by a big earthquake in theory, but only if the system is already primed for an eruption and that it's theoretically much easier to trigger if a volcano has an active hydrothermal system in operation. Hydrothermal systems, by the way, are systems which involve a lot of hot water in the Earth's crust. And what do you know? New Zealand's Taupo Volcanic Zone has a pretty, world-famous, steamy hydrothermal system. So that seems like a great place to investigate this. In a vaguely relevant note, very recent research has shown that long since subsided seawater from the nearby Hikurangi subduction zone, acting as a volatile and reducing the melting point of rocks below Taupo, is a large part of why the Taupo volcanic zone even exists, combined with some decompression melting. Anyway, the reason I'm talking about the Taupo Volcanic Zone is that a brand new paper looking at this area just found some great evidence that volcanic activity was directly caused by an earthquake at this particular site. Specifically, the really big magnitude 7.8 earthquake that happened on the 13th of November 2016. This earthquake was really complicated, with slip on multiple faults, rupturing over a distance of roughly 150 kilometers offshore of the town of Kaikoura in the northern South Island, and this resulted in a 7 meter tall tsunami, as well as some building damage and two deaths. The quake initiated at a depth of around 15 kilometers and may or may not have involved slip on the plate margin, potentially making it a so-called megathrust earthquake. The earthquake also triggered a lot of slow slip and left a pretty noteworthy impact on the country's already complicated vertical land movement trends. Which isn't exactly great for people who, like me, work on sea level research and work on using those trends to help understand future sea level change. Anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent. I'm sorry I keep making those. Needless to say, this was a big and interesting earthquake that had some big and interesting effects. Including, as it turns out, at the Taupo Volcanic Zone. But what is the Taupo Volcanic Zone? Well, the Taupo Volcanic Zone is a massive supervolcano that lies under the middle of the North Island, a huge caldera of which forms Lake Taupo, which is New Zealand's biggest lake. It's not the classical volcano you might imagine of a big smoky mountain, instead it's a mostly flat area that has some big craters from huge past eruptions, which have left some cool tephra deposits for geologists to find in the country's sediments to help understand its history, which are quite useful for dating as it turns out. A new study by master's student Jessica Schuler and colleagues, most of whom are actually people I know from my time at Victoria University of Wellington, so hi, uh, has shed some new light on the influence of big earthquakes on volcanoes, using this particular volcano as a case study, and that's the focus of this video. Now, before you get too excited, I'm going to point out that the Taupo volcano hasn't actually erupted in about 1,800 years. So we're not going to say, hey, this earthquake happened and then it erupted, but it has undergone periods of inflation and deflation recently. And this earthquake 
has resulted in some interesting and unusual movements in the volcano. This study looked at geodetic data from continuous global navigation satellite system stations, or GNSS stations, which are basically GPS stations which monitor the ground position around the lake to incredibly high accuracy. Schuler and colleagues detrended this data and did some modeling work to work out the stress changes that resulted. In any case, over a course of a roughly two-week period immediately after the earthquake, the GPS stations all moved around four to six millimeters in a north to north northeast direction. Now, I'm going to be honest, there's a chunk of this paper that I couldn't really understand due to me not having much of a geophysics brain. But basically, using Coulomb stress modeling, they found that this could have had a few different possible causes. The first of these causes is the intrusion of a dike. A dike in this context is a wedge of magma which intrudes into the overlying rocks. It's not the meaning of dike that you're probably thinking of if you're not a geologist. Anyway, the authors note that this could have been triggered by the earthquake in one of a few ways. One of these ways is that shaking could have triggered bubble nucleation in the magma chamber, and as bubbles rose they could have caused pressure to build and magma to slosh about. Uh, I'm not even kidding, the paper literally uses the word sloshing, I love it. Uh, this rising pressure could have cracked overlying rocks and then allowed a dike to intrude upwards into them. Alternatively, the shaking from the earthquake could have sloshed the magma into planes of weakness it could exploit. Again, I love that this paper uses the word slosh, it's amazing. Or it could have resulted in a loss of permeability in the overlying rocks by shaking out clusts in pore space and creating room for the magma to intrude. Alternatively, it might just be that we're seeing slip on a fault overlying the magma chamber. So we don't really know exactly what happened, but we do know that an earthquake 500 kilometers away triggered movement in the volcano. And now for our fun little intermission. Hello viewers, we're now halfway through the episode, which means that it's time for our engagement bait game of Rockman. What's Rockman? This is Rockman. Rockman is the sentient weapon which I shall use to take over the planet with the power of magical geology. These letters are a geological phrase which represent my summoning spell. If you can guess the phrase before me, you can stop me from bringing about the rise of Rockman and taking over the world. Each week you guess a letter, and the most upvoted letter either goes on the board if you're right, or results in a rock going on Rockman. The most upvoted letter last week, with a staggering 30 upvotes, was S. So, is S on the board, and if so, is this going to be another defeat at my hands, or a victory at my hands? Sadly, for me, S is in fact on the board. And not only is S on the board, it is on the board once, twice, three times. I... I... I still have confidence. I'm still going to take over the world. You can't stop me. But, but you will if you keep guessing this well. Anyway, <laughs> do you think you have what it takes to prevent the rise of Rockman? Put your guesses in the comments below, and the most upvoted letter goes on the board, or fails to go on the board, in the next video. And now back to the geological content you actually clicked on this video for. Model outputs indicate that if this was a dike, it was around 2 kilometers long and around 3.9 meters wide and emplaced in the northwest of the lake, trending roughly northwest to southeast. 
Similarly, if it was a fault, it would have been in roughly the same place, at roughly the same direction, but it was harder for the authors to interpret the precise dimensions of that fault. The question now is, why Taupo? Why a volcano 500 kilometers from where the earthquake happened? Well, first we'll just quickly bring up that stress modeling based on the GNSS data indicates that a very high dynamic stress regime was initiated in the crust around New Zealand following the quake, and the paper's findings indicate that the volcano was prone to respond to this stress, because it's in a state of being primed for unrest. Which might mean that this sleeping giant poses a much greater threat to human life in the region than we previously realised, especially if a bigger earthquake triggers even more activity. And on that happy note, I'm heading off. I'm going to focus on my big Jordan Peterson debunk video from now on, but to build up hype I'm going to make a couple of fun little short videos about geological and paleontological pseudoscience, which I hope you'll enjoy. In any case, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Quick shout out to my wonderful patrons Jean and Eric Feenstra, thank you so much for helping this happen, and to the incredible Carl Lacamillion for supporting me. Um, independently of that, I really appreciate you guys, you're amazing. If you want to support the channel, there is a link to my Ko-fi and to my Patreon in the descriptions below, and if not, if you like the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you never miss a video. In any case, I've been DJ King, signing off.